Not your parents' teenage drama. The OC was every teen's favorite drama when it came out, but what was the drama like behind the scenes? The cast of The O.C. are all grown up, and they've come out in the media, sharing what it was really like to work on the show. From dealing with invasions of privacy to being rude on set, the cast have looked back on their time as budding young Hollywood stars on a hit show. All these cameras, all this fame, all this stuff all at once around that time, too, The O.C. was just a phenomena. At the age of 18, Misha Barton was cast as Marissa Cooper on the show. In an essay for Harper's Bazaar UK, Misha said she was expected to meet the demands of people who were twice her age and felt pressured to grow up too quickly. Kids my age, I do think that those things really happen whether people like to admit to it or not. As a teenager in an adult world, I felt a perpetual fear that it might backfire, turning my career on its head. Misha is 35 years old today and says that when she got the courage to speak up about her time on the show, over a decade after she shot her last episode, she was labeled as a nightmare to work with by media outlets citing an unnamed source. While quarantining during the COVID-19 pandemic, she said she had time to reflect on her time on the show and realize the trauma she'd been carrying for all these years. While she's thankful for the opportunities she was given, she says that her experiences led to multiple breakdowns and PTSD. For those who haven't seen The O.C., Misha played a rich, young teenager who had the world at her fingertips. Think Gossip Girl before there was a Gossip Girl. These teenagers had no boundaries and regularly pushed the limits. In real life, Misha says playing this character made her feel pressured to grow up faster so she could experience the same things her character was experiencing in the show. It didn't stop there. She says there was also tension between her and her castmates when it came to the media. Like most work environments, Misha said that some of her castmates became envious when she started getting attention for her role in the public. She said that she was accused of courting the public and being attention-seeking, and while she wasn't doing that, it began to weigh on her and snowball. Comparing her journey to Britney Spears' journey, portrayed in Framing Britney Spears, she says the paparazzi became more aggressive and attentive when she tried to be unfamous. She said the paparazzi would try to climb over walls, they tracked her phone and her car, and they would even make deals with restaurant workers who would notify them when she ate out. It got so extreme that she said the paparazzi would even buy cell phones for homeless people, telling them to call as soon as they spotted her. Misha says she didn't like leaving home. While Misha said she had a tough time on set, Rachel Bilson says she's confused by her comments as she had a different experience. I'm definitely pretty confused by most of it, and I don't, I don't know who she's referring to. Rachel wasn't always perfect, though. She recently admitted that sometimes the actors on the show were poorly behaved and apologized to her co-star, Tate Donovan. Tate, who acted on the show and also directed, said by the time he started to direct, the kids had developed unpleasant attitudes, and some of them didn't want to be doing the show anymore. It's clear that the actors were so young that they probably didn't always realize the repercussion of their actions. It's common knowledge now that Misha's character, Marissa, passes away in season three of the show. And while actors are meant to keep events like this a secret until the show airs, Misha didn't know. Just hours before the episode aired, Misha went on Access Hollywood and confirmed the rumors that she would be leaving the show. We can't imagine what the producers were thinking during this interview. While Rachel and Misha were best friends on the show, it's reported that the two didn't really get along behind the scenes. And it's rumored that the two hadn't liked each other from the beginning. In 2004, Misha even took a few cheap shots at Rachel during an interview, commenting on her appearance and personality. The drama didn't stop there. According to Cam Gigandet, who played Marissa's boyfriend on the show, the cast would forget their lines on purpose because they didn't want to do the show anymore. He remembers the main cast members being miserable, according to Elle.com. He even said Ben McKenzie was mean to him. While he didn't remember doing anything to trigger Ben, he said the actor was not nice. Ben told Entertainment Weekly that the transition from being a struggling actor to an A-lister was not an easy one. There's no easy transition from sleeping on the floor of your friend's apartment in the valley he went on to say that finding that level of success at such a young age can make you behave like a jerk. So why did the actors have poor attitudes? Tate Donovan said that the actors felt like they were being held back from being film actors. 
He said one of the actors turned to him during filming and said, This show is ruining my film career. Tate said at the time, that actor had never done a film before. Backing up this same notion, Misha told Us Weekly that it didn't feel right to do a reunion in 2013. She said, Before the OC, I was on track to do some great films. And one thing happened, and then I got this mega stardom all from this show. It is what it is, but I'm not looking to get sucked back into the limelight of it. Tate said in an interview with Vulture that it was pretty tough to work with the young actors. He said, The adults were all fantastic, total pros, but you know how it is with young actors, and I know because I was one of them once. When you achieve a certain amount of success, you want to be doing something else. While the stars probably had ambitions of taking their careers to the silver screen, they didn't end up doing too bad for themselves. The main cast all have net worths today between $3 million and $16 million. Not too bad. If you're an OC junkie, you can relive the series with actresses Rachel Bilson and Melinda Clark. While these two started the show as recurring characters, instead of regular cast members, they soon secured their spots as fan favorites. Now the two fan favorites have a podcast called Welcome to the OC, Bitches. Each episode breaks down an episode of the OC for all the diehard fans. On the first episode, creator and executive producer Josh Schwartz talks about the iconic soundtrack associated with the show, and even tells the hosts what song he can't stand to listen to anymore. Hide and Seek song from season oh, yeah. two, you know, um, not to get ahead of ourselves. The show is known for its killer soundtrack, and the show and soundtrack both had a huge cultural impact. The show has been said to continue to live on through its music, and Josh Schwartz even told TV Guide that he feels responsible for making indie music mainstream. The funny thing is, he wasn't trying to put all these bands on the map. He was actually looking for ways to save money. Indie artists were the only artists that the show could afford when it launched. And so a lot of these bands we could get for less money because they were indie bands. Bands were also more open to being licensed because streaming services like Apple and Spotify weren't invented at the time. But do you know what band would not let the OC use their music? Arcade Fire! The Canadian band didn't want to lose their music. Schwartz said he has no hard feelings about it and still loves the band despite them saying no. Since saying no to the OC, Arcade Fire has had a change of heart. They've since featured their music on Six Feet Under, 13 Reasons Why, and Euphoria. Rachel and Melinda's podcast will cover every episode of The O.C., so it's the perfect way to relive the cultural phenomenon. The podcast starts at the very beginning, and Rachel said she hopes it can bring light and laughter to listeners after a difficult 2020. The hosts are re-watching all the episodes to refresh their memories both on and off the set, and will tell stories from everyone, not just actors. Camera operators, makeup artists, and many people behind the scenes will also take part to bring the show back to life. We can't wait to hear more about what was really going on behind the scenes of the iconic show. Who was your favorite character on the OC? Let us know in the comments section below. And for all the latest and greatest in celebrity and entertainment news, like this video and subscribe to our channel. See you next time on The Things Celebrity.